Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. Wow, I think DHL uh, probably did a security inspection on this one. Sorry for all the messed up uh, tape over it. Has some of the basic specs here, but we'll go into some more detail once we get into whatever it is in here. Now, I want to tell you, a lot of you guys have seen me review health watches. Uh, advanced health watches, the ones that have ECG capability because they have the electronic plates built into them that uh, let you create a signal by touching this to your arm and then you touch a point like here and you can get an ECG chart. Well, you're about to be blown away because not only can this one do that, but it has Bluetooth calling capability. What? Yeah, never seen those together before. Now, it's a modified Bluetooth calling from what I understand, so be sure to watch the whole review before you just jump in and buy it. Where can you buy it if you're ready to jump in? From Banggood, of course. This is a Bakey ES08, and it's a 1.28-inch full-touch screen, ECG and PPG, heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen. It's got respiration rate. And Bluetooth calling, IP67 waterproof with about seven days of continuous usage and uh, um, yeah, about an hour and a half to charge it. From what I remember from the specs, let's take a closer look at those. Got to reduce it to fit one page, you know. I get uh, notifications if I'm using too much paper. I know, shouldn't be using paper at all, but hey, I'm old school. Anyway, information, you've got call reminder, message reminders. That'll be pushed to your phone, uh, from your phone to the watch as well. Heart rate, all the other readings here. Um, the breath rate monitoring is interesting because it can uh, tell what your breath rate is from assessing your pulse. A lot of fun stuff going on. Here you go, Bluetooth calling, music control. That means it's got speaker and microphone built in. You'll be able to play music from your phone sent to your watch, and it'll come out of the watch. So no more dragging your phone around near your workout spot. you got to stop watch and do not disturb mode and other things. Again, IP67 waterproof. That's more water resistance. I really wouldn't risk getting it too wet. Um, China's definition of IP67 is a little bit be uh, different than everyone else's, and getting it wet at all is not a good idea, but if you have to or you accidentally do, it's okay. All right, uh, we have in the box also a four-pin charging connector. Let's open the band up. Wow, look how thick that TPU band is. Oh, I see. It's underneath there. Removable, of course. Charging pins go here. Yep, strong enough to hold the watch. Very unusual design. I have not seen the plates like that. Your diodes are in the middle there. We've got a little cover that, oh, it's going to take the cover off before it takes the plastic off. There's a film on here. This is not the actual um, screen protector, and you usually pull that off. See, i got a bubble in there now, so I'll take that all off before we go further. Um, but you can have a screen protector on it as well. We've got a little manual, Chinese and English, and um, here's the information on it. It's using the Smart Health uh, app. We've played with that one before. There's the QR code, or you can click the link in the show notes to download it to your phone. Uh, or to your yeah to your phone as that'll be what we tether to and we'll be doing the ecg charts now an interesting thing about this son as you're looking at this i'll get into the details in a little while is when you're doing an ecg reading usually it gives you your heart rate and that's typical and usually that heart rate is the ppg when coming from the green diodes and that's about all plus seeing your heart wave well, this one has an entry for heart rate variability, HRV, which of course is coming from the uh, electrical connection. So you're about to see it does both. But before we do that, I got to fix this thing up, charge it, and uh, we'll be right back. There, films off the cover. You have one button and you have an electro. We're going to press and hold the button, give it a second. It vibrated and it comes up into a watch face. Nice, bright, colorful screen. Uh, and a distinctive bezel on this one. Looks like a gear type of a thing that should rotate, simulated, of course. And um, what else? We said we have a microphone and speaker in this one too. So we can do Bluetooth calling and music playing. When we swipe down, you get all of these different controls. 
calls. Shows we're not Bluetooth tethered yet. Date and information. Find your phone. Do not disturb mode if you want. Uh, information about the watch. Yes, 08. And, of course, settings where you can control brightness, which, to give you an idea, there's the lowest level, which is still plenty, plenty bright. Uh, three, four different levels, and there's two, almost too bright to film with, so... Yeah, let's go to uh, that one right there for brightness. You've got to twist your wrist to uh, light up the screen. And, of course, there's the QR code that you could scan to download the tethering app, which you're about to show you because most of the excitement happens when you're working with the app. You've got reset and shutdown uh, also in your overall settings. So that's everything there. Going this way, we get to the music player. It's going to try to open it. Oh, you heard that. A little bit of sound. Now, it has, um, I think, an internal... No, this one doesn't have any internal memory, and it's broken connection to Bluetooth. So we can't play music yet. We have to demo that once we're connected. Coming up, we get into all of the different apps. Uh, this is your text messaging. Um, last night's sleep time, which will be, of course, on tiles that you go across. You've got a uh, count... Uh, a stopwatch it's not a countdown timer they usually use stopwatch for that and if you leave it and you come back into it it reset it so it's not continuously running in the background notice this doesn't scroll it actually flips there's remote camera here's weather in your area there's heart rate ECG blood pressure and blood oxygen we're going to show you all that in the tabs as we go across and that's your breath rate. And those are all of the different things that you've got here. Well, press it to come back. And we got to that by going that way. And going this way, now we go through the tiles. So here's your overall step count. It's right out of the box. Don't have any data on it for you. And it's a quick timeout on this one. But it would be here, step counts, calories, distance traveled. Heart rate's going to give you green diode uh, readings right there. E, uh, ECG, we're going to show you when we come back and have it on. Here's blood pressure, again, with green diodes, systolic, diastolic. Then you get blood oxygen, and this is an older model, apparently, only using the green diodes. We know red is a bit more efficient and maybe a bit more accurate, but it is working, so you do have a blood oxygen component in as well. And here's your um, breath rate that also needs the green diodes to work. You've got the temperature which you can set Fahrenheit from the app and the conditions in your area and then you can get into your overall sports which include without GPS support now running mountain climbing walking football badminton skipping biking and that's it and then it loops so three pages of stuff there you go into one of them it's going to start uh, counting it's going to give you your steps distance calories and heart rate along with the time which is nice to have the time available. And we can exit out of that. And then you got your settings, which we've already looked at. And back to the music player. And back to the watch face. So they loop left and right. Oh, no, they don't. Okay, it's only music player here. Or you can get to music player here at the very last one before coming back again. That's odd. Okay. All right, that's everything here. I'm going to get the app ready and put it on, and we'll go over a little bit more. From the Google Play Store, the app is Smart Health. Once you've downloaded it, you open it, you set yourself up with an account, you land on this page. When you're connected to the watch, this will be white instead of red, and you'll have all kinds of data available to you, which we're going to go over. Back to the watch for a second now. From here, when we turn it on, I double, I twisted it and touched it at the same time, which caused it to come on and off. Uh, like I say, the heart or the step count is here. It's not touchable for anything, but you get to heart rate and it should immediately be checking for it nothing to have to press um, you should see pretty good sized digits of the heart rate now you notice over here when I go into heart rate it's not actually transmitting it directly but I do have the um, measuring time and information for various readings here we go 91 90 and it vibrated and so it's recorded that one now, this is not um, manually start for taking heart rate, but when we sync it, we should have a heart rate there. Um, 
Well, BP is for blood pressure, and you can remotely do blood pressure calibration, which is something we set up ahead of time, which is great. If you know that you're, say, 125 over 85, uh, and you confirm that, then you've got a calibration that it will be measuring against when you actually do your measurements. So it's here. It's attempting to get a measurement on the watch now. Probably hasn't sent that information until we sync, but when it's all set up and you do it, it'll be, it'll be correct. Here we go. It's flashing around a little bit. Again, blood pressure is usually the least accurate of all these measurements because it really is best done with a cuff. It's trying to make interpolations based on the, the diodes shining down below. And it's not showing up here, uh, like we said, but uh, it is in here. We did heart rate. And we're going to come back to that. We did blood pressure, and now we're on to blood oxygen. Same thing down here now, sleep time. HRV, which is going to be tied to the ECG, and blood oxygen readings will show up here. And again, it's taking it with the green diodes, not the red ones. And there we go, 98%. So that just shows you your basic measurements. Now, I'm going to sync things and see if we'll get that stuff transferred over here. Generally, you just press and release, and it'll transfer. You notice an ECG chart here. I did one earlier and synchronized it, so it has something to kind of play with, but we're going to take a live one as well. There you go. Blood pressure, heart rate, no last night's sleep time, and blood oxygen. Respiratory rate, haven't done that yet, and HRV we're going to be getting uh, right now from the ECG. So let's... Switch back to the watch and pretend you're out in the field somewhere away from your phone. You go here and it's already beginning. Now you, you want to make sure that your skin is nice and moist. The green diodes are going to be computing your heart rate in um, beats per minute from the green diode PPG technology. And heart rate variability is going to come uh, from uh, the electrodes, like I said. Now, for this one, sadly, I really do have to be quiet. I know, I know, you can't stand that. It jumps all over the place. Otherwise, as you can see, it's real sensitive. This is one of the most sensitive ones I've seen. So you have to set up properly. Better if you're sitting still, you moisten your finger, you moisten your wrist or your, your arm, and you just hope that it'll it'll work. The Heart rate's coming through, of course. I know, I'm not getting quiet. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. But at least you can see the heart wave. Doggone it. If it were set up properly, you'd have a nice uh, appropriate heart rate. There, you see HRV. It's come up with the heart rate variability, which can do get all kinds of factors can be derived from that based on your stress level. Um, I don't know, all kinds of things. Um and if it's uh, fairly accurate, uh, you can actually work with it to try to relax, probably with your breath rate as well. Now, it goes on and on and on. I'm not sure for how long. Okay, there, it just vibrated, and it finished that one. Now, we also wanted to come back here. All right, all right, I'll let you be in control, watch. I know you want to. We're going to go all the way to the end for the respiratory part, because we didn't get a reading on that. We're going to do... Breaths per minute with Mr. Ticks talking. It's going to be totally inaccurate. <sighs> but if you're calm and you breathe, it's going to give you a reading. I'm usually about 12, 15, 12, 10, depending. Of course, I'm talking right now, so I got 18. So now we're going to do another uh, refresh. Notice the pattern there. Refresh it. It's going to transfer those data points over. And it's completed that synchronization. Respiratory rate. It didn't get our ECG. We might have to go into it, or it takes it a while. Let's go into ECG then. And, oh, I know. We go into here, and then we come over to here. There's where it refreshes now, and it's going to bring in the data that we just collected independently on the watch. Now, it's here uh, but it hasn't really been uh, assessed by the artificial intelligence circuitry that can look it over to give you some guidance. So we'll tap on records. Here's the information we got. 
heart rate variability, heart rate, and the blood pressure were derived from it. And that's what it looks like. I guess it, it actually looks pretty good on chart. And then here I hit the AI diagnosis. And it actually is, and diagnosis is not the right word. It's just a synopsis, an evaluation, some basic information. There's your basic chart. Talks about it, heart rate. And it's uh, looking at all of these possible factors to see if there's an anomaly. Um, again, we've really reviewed the heck out of this in other watches that use this app with this report. So I'm not going to go any deeper than just an overview for you. I do want to show you, though, that from this, you can actually start testing. I need both hands. I say start testing, and then I press that button. Now you're seeing the picture that was similar to what you saw in the um, the uh, printed page, right, uh, that showed the, the device. Well, getting the focus right is challenging. So the icon doesn't change on the watch. It just stays there to let you know that it is actually doing an ECG test right now. But it's doing it remotely, and we're doing it from the phone, as long as you're in Bluetooth range. Now look up above. If you can see, it's an 87 heart rate, 29 heart rate variability, and 125 over 84 for blood pressure. Down at the bottom, you can see it's 60% done. So it goes about, I don't know, between 30 and 30 seconds in a minute. You can stop it down below if you want to. And it has an audible beep, but I have sound turned off on the watch on the phone right now. Otherwise, it would drive us nuts. It's, uh, it's giving you a beep on each of the peaks. It's a dirty waveform right now because I'm having a heck of a time talking with you guys and I'm not sitting very still but even given it it's attempting it and look it says that it was too poor of a signal to give a reading and that's my fault not the watch or the app um, but yeah but it did get some data out of it and again you go over here it refreshes anything that you've done from the watch and it will list the um, the reading right there and it looks like it picked it up after all there it is as noisy as it is and it's saying I could run an analysis on it. Let's see what it does. Now, see, it's just too noisy for even the uh, circuitry to figure out what's going on. That's the highlight of this watch is the um, ability to do the ECGs and all of the other data. Now, I'm not getting any HRV, and I'm not sure how we're supposed to test for that. I figured it would come automatically from the ECG. Uh, so maybe that's a separate feature that other watches have that's not integrated here. What we haven't looked at yet is um, the audio section and Bluetooth calling and music playing. Now, I have a little news service running on the phone that normally is playing out of the phone. And here I am on the watch. Turn the volume up a bit. Can you hear it? It's a little soft. And that's at full volume. But I can pause. Not sure if I can go to the next one. Yeah, I can. And it's playing. Yeah. Okay, so we do have an audio player in the watch, but it's considerably softer than, of course, when you're playing it out of the phone. Now, it would work the same way for phone calls. If there's an incoming phone call to the uh, phone, you'll be able to take it on the watch. But you can't initiate a call from the watch like you normally can in Bluetooth calling. But it is pretty amazing that you've got a health watch that does all these other health functions and also can support uh, uh, music playing and Bluetooth calling. Look at a few of the other uh, faces that are in here. Here's their fancy ECG one that you've got. That's just the face. It's not a real chart or anything. And uh, that's about it. The band is a nice, solid TPU one we talk about. Very flexible. Uh, <laughs> very waterproof. Sweaty me getting it all over here. And um, the ECG uh, plates are on the back. And um, yeah, it looks like it does what many of the other ECG watches that we've looked at have done, tethering to the same app. It's not doing the um the scientific sleep with the Lorenz scatter diagrams and sleep apnea monitoring and nighttime uh, blood oxygen that's a whole different app and a whole different set of watches that do that you know, like two different camps this is the one that goes into detail on the ECG both on the watch and directly on the app and it's from uh, Banggood called the Bakey ES 
0-8. Check the show notes for a, a link if I can get you a discount. It's on flash sale right now, so that's probably about what you're looking at, around $60. And uh, pick it up if you're interested. Thanks for watching, gang. We'll see you again soon.